All right, thanks for watching and welcome to our third example of the rigorous definition of a limit. Today we would like to do a slightly fancier fraction than last time with lots of interesting twists and turns. So what you want to show today is let's show that the limit as n goes to infinity of, let's say, 2n cubed plus 3n over n cubed minus 2. What do we want to show this is equal to? Well, in the long run, as n goes to infinity, those first two terms dominate, so the limit should be 2 over 1, which is 2. And again, this is Sn, and this is S. And what do we want to show? We want to show that for all epsilon, there is some threshold capital M, such that if you're beyond that threshold, if M is greater than uh, capital M, then the difference between your sequence and your limit is less than epsilon. Remember, what do we want to do? We want to take this equation and then solve for M. And so our first step, step one out of two, is again finding Nemo, so find n. n. In particular, let's calculate Sn minus s, which again here becomes 2n cubed plus 3n over n cubed minus 2, and we want to compare it with the number 2. particular, this begs to be put on a common denominator, so this becomes 2n cubed plus 3n minus 2 times n cubed minus 2 over n cubed minus 2. And then let's hope this simplifies, so this becomes, let's see, 2n uh, cubed plus 3n, minus 2n cubed, plus 4, over n cubed minus 2. And this simplifies, and then we get a 3n plus 4, over n cubed minus 2. Okay, now, before, everything was positive, so we could just put, uh, remove the absolute value. But here's is a little problem. This is not always positive. Let's say for n equals 1, this becomes negative. But essentially what we want to say is that in the long run, as you know, if n is very large, this is actually positive. And in particular, what do we need? We need n cubed minus 2 to be greater than 0. So this equals to 3n plus 4 over n cubed minus 2, which again we want to be less than epsilon, provided that provided that n cubed minus 2 is positive, but this is n cubed, it's greater than 2. And so n, it's greater than cube root of 2. So remember one thing. So we will choose capital N soon, but remember we also have this condition, that n is greater than cube root of 2. And we need to remember that. Now, okay. So in particular, what do we have? Sn minus s is uh, this thing. So Sn minus s, it's 3n plus 4 over n cubed minus 2, which is less than epsilon. Now, in the previous example, it was very easy to solve for n because we just had one occurrence of n. Here, it's much harder. And that's why we have to think a little bit more. Now, essentially what we want to do we would like to make the, 
This is a fraction. So we would like to make the denominator less than something, and we would like and we would like to make the numerator less than something, and we would like to make the denominator greater than something. Because then if you make, take reciprocals, it does become less than something. And this is the main idea. So now let's focus on the numerator. So what do we want? We want 3n plus 4 to be less than blah. That's ideally some smaller number, but here it doesn't really matter. And here's the trick. Notice if n is 4, I'm sorry, if n, if, uh, let's say n is greater than 1, then 4n, it's greater than 4. In particular, this says 4 is less than 4n. So, in particular, 3n plus 4, it's less than 3n plus 4n, and that's 7n. And by the way, this is completely arbitrary. You could also do n greater than 2, n greater than whatever. That's fine here. And in particular, again, if you choose big N, remember also to remind yourself that N is bigger than 1. Um, that's fine. So very good. In other words, we found an upper bound from the numerator, and now we want to do the same thing but for the denominator, except the opposite. We want to say N cubed minus 2 is bigger than something. Now for the denominator, This time, we want n cubed minus 2 to be bigger than blah, some other blah. Some other blah, not just 0, but something ideally that depends on n. And why? Because then if you take 1 over this, it does become less than something. And here's the idea. Well, look, if you draw, let's say, n cubed, N cubed. Well, n cubed minus 2 is slightly smaller than that. But the point is, n cubed minus 2 still has a, a cubic growth. So in particular, while it is not true that n cubed minus 2 is bigger than n cubed, it's still true that it's bigger than, let's say, n cubed over 2. And this number 2 is arbitrary. You could also say n cubed over 3. It doesn't matter. So in particular, let's figure out when n cubed minus 2 is bigger than n cubed over 2. Oh. When n cubed minus 2 it's bigger than n cubed over 2. And, uh, you know, you can solve for this. So this becomes 1 n cubed and then minus 1 half n cubed. So 1 minus 1 half n cubed. It's bigger than 2. And then we get uh, 1 half n cubed. It's bigger than 2. And then n cubed, it's bigger than 4. So in particular, notice this thing is true when n is bigger than cube root of 4. In particular, if n is large enough, we actually do have that n cubed minus 2 is bigger than n, cu n cubed over 2. So, we also have, so if n is large, n cubed minus 2 is bigger than n cubed over 2. And now we can finally deal with our fraction. And so let's go back to our fraction. So what we have is again sn minus n that becomes 3n, minus, 3N plus 4 over um, n cubed over minus 2. And now what do we have? Remember the numerator is less than 7n and for the denominator we know that the technically speaking n cubed minus 2 is bigger than n, 
n cubed over 2. So in particular, if you become, take reciprocals, it becomes less than 1 over n cubed minus 2. So in particular, we get this thing, and this just simplifies to 7n over 2 over n cubed, which just becomes 14 over n squared. And remember, this gibberish, we want to be less than epsilon, so 14 over n squared is less than epsilon, so n squared becomes greater than, I believe, epsilon, uh, so n squared over 14, it's greater than 1 over epsilon, so n squared, it's greater than 14 over epsilon, so n, it's greater than square root of 14 over epsilon. Now, this suggests to let n be squared of 14 over epsilon. But wait a moment. Remember we had those three other conditions, like n is bigger than cube root of 3, n is bigger than 1, n is bigger than cube root of, um, of 2, or 4, I believe. So, but... Remember that, that we also had, I believe, n was greater than cube root of 2, n was greater than 1, and n was greater than cube root of 4. For example, what we have, let's say this is 1, this is cube root of 2, maybe this is cube root of 4, cube root of 4, and I don't know, maybe square root of 14 over epsilon is here. Not sure it could be here, whatever. Um, and basically what you want, you want to choose capital N simply being the bigger one of all those numbers. So just that capital N to be the max of those four numbers. In other words, that capital N be the max of, let's say, 1, uh, cube root of 2, cube root of 4, and uh, square root of 14 over epsilon. And technically notice that well, cube root of 4 is bigger than those numbers, so really this just becomes the bigger one of either cube root of 4 or square root of 14 over epsilon. And we want to show that this one. Because again, we don't know if epsilon is big or small. Of course, ideally it's small, but so in particular, sometimes this number could be bigger, sometimes this number could be bigger. And we just want to say let capital N be bigger than all those numbers so that all the conditions we have before are actually true. And you see now why we call this scratch work? Because we had all these ideas going on and now we really just want to do the proof. Think of before as having all our ingredients, and now we want to uh, do the recipe. So welcome to Payam's home kitchen, in some sense. So step two, show that this proof works. So let epsilon be given, and let uh, capital N, again, to be the bigger one of cube root of 4 and square root of 14 over epsilon, and suppose n is bigger than capital N, then what did we have? So we had, so remember, we had Sn minus S, and it became, I believe, absolute value of, I think, uh, 3n plus 4 over n cubed minus 2. But now, remember, n is bigger than, again, remember the maximum was also cube root of 2. So in particular, n cubed minus 2 is indeed positive. So this becomes 3n plus 4 over n cubed minus 2. And now, remember also that n was bigger than 1. So in particular, what do we have? 3n plus 4 it's, uh, was less than 
3n plus 4n, which is 7n. So in particular, this is less than 7n over n cubed minus 2. And also, you see that's a nice thing because n is bigger than the maximum of those three. So in particular, what we also had was n was greater than cube root of 4. So in particular, what we did have was n cubed minus 2 is bigger than n cubed over 2. And so this becomes less than 7n over uh, n cubed over 2, which simplifies, if you want, to 14 over n squared. And finally, if uh, we know that n is bigger than square root of 14 over epsilon, so n squared it's greater than 14 over epsilon, so 1 over n squared, it's less than epsilon over 14. And last but not least, what we have is that, again, Sn, so Sn minus S, which again we saw was less than 14 over n squared. This becomes less than 14 over, 14 times epsilon over 14. Bang, bang, that is epsilon, very good. Therefore, what do we have? The limit as n goes to infinity of 2n cubed plus 3n over n cubed minus 2 is indeed 2. And therefore, we can go home happy. And next time we'll do even more examples of this. All right, thank you.